For this example, we aim to simplify a few rational functions. The first one is x to the fourth minus uh, 10x cubed divided by x squared minus 17x plus 70. Well, the first step with this kind of thing is always to factor. And the first step of factoring is always to look for the greatest common factor. So let's check out this first one here up in the numerator, right? We have x to the fourth minus 10x cubed. I'm thinking we can factor out a greatest common factor of x cubed, leaving behind x minus 10, right? When, when we have uh, variables with exponents like this, the greatest common factor is just the one with the, the smallest exponent. So x, to the x cubed comes out, and we subtract 3 from both these powers to see what's left. All right, down below, let's see. It looks like we're going to need to factor this thing here. Um, so we're looking for factors of 70, so two numbers that multiply together to, to get 70, but add together to get negative 17. Okay, two numbers that multiply to 70, but add to negative 17. Hmm. Well, 70 is 10 times 7. 10 plus 7 is 17, so what if we did negative 10 times negative 7? That, that does the trick. There we go. So we factor this down, we get x minus 10, x minus 7, and finally we get our cancellation. That's the best part of these problems, is that cancellation at the very end, leaving us with x cubed over x minus 7. There we go. Let's look at the next one. We have AB plus AC plus B squared plus BC all over B plus C. Anytime you see four terms like this, one specific method should jump right out. That method is grouping. Right? It won't always work, but it seems to work an awful lot in algebra class. Right? If you encountered a, you know, an expression with four terms out in the wild, you probably wouldn't be able to factor with grouping, but oftentimes inside algebra, grouping works, and it's a really fun method. So let's see, what can we factor out of these first two terms? Well, an a comes out, leaves us with b plus c. Out of the second two terms, a b comes out, leaves us with b plus c again. Okay, so now we're going to grab this, and this is, a, this is still a plus in between here. So we'll grab this b plus c term and bring it to the front. Okay, so I'm going to factor this to the very front. That gives us, all right, a b plus c in the front. And what does it leave behind? a plus b. Down below, we still have a b plus c. And now, since these parentheses are, sorry, since these pluses are inside parentheses, we can factor this thing, right? We're, we're factoring entire terms. If there was a plus right here, we wouldn't be able to do that. But the pluses up here are inside the parentheses, so we can cancel these two factors, leaving us with a plus b. Let's try another one. For part c here, we have x cubed plus 64 divided by x cubed plus 4. And one thing to jump right out with this one, that, that term in the numerator is the sum of cubes x cubed is clearly a cube, and 64 is also a, a, a cube. And you should, it really helps to know some of the basic um, perfect cubes. You want to have these a little bit internalized so you can recognize them. For instance, when you see 8, do you recognize that as 2 cubed? Um, how about 3 cubed? 3 cubed, 27. When you see 27, do you recognize that as 3 cubed? 4 cubed, 64. When you see 64, do you automatically think, ah, that's 4 cubed? That's the kind of thing you want to be able to recognize. Let's say go all the way up to 5, maybe. 5 cubed, 125. So if you see 125, you want to be able to automatically think, ah, yes, that's 5 cubed. So back to the problem. x cubed plus 64 is the sum of cubes. There's a formula for that. Some call it the SOAP formula a cubed plus b cubed equals a plus b, so this is same, and then it's a squared minus ab plus b squared, so opposite and then always positive, so s-o-a-p, so formula. It helps us remember the signs. Okay, so that'll help us factor here, so let's factor the numerator. Okay, so note this is x cubed plus 4 cubed, so a is x and b is 4 in this scenario, so we'll do x plus 4 
and then we have x squared minus, multiply them together, 4x plus, and then just square the 4, 16. All right, all over the denominator, which is x plus 4. Those cancel quite nicely, leaving us with x squared minus 4x plus 16 for our answer.